up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a close look at the trench boot from Oak Street Bootmakers. So Oak Street is a much talked about footwear company that was founded in 2009 by George Vlagos. It's a Chicago based company. So Oak Street is the name of a short street in the city's Gold Coast neighborhood. And it also refers to the surrounding shopping district as well. All of their boots are handcrafted in the United States with Horween leather, which is another beloved Chicago company. They make a lot of leather, including the very famous Chrome XL, which these boots are made from. And when it comes to their shoes, they're pretty well known for these hand-sewn moccasin type shoes, but when it comes to their boots, the trench boot is definitely their most popular. And according to their chief of operations, David Chen, who I spoke with, the natural Chrome XL leather is the most popular variety you get it in. So let's dive in. So this is the natural day night trench boot. It's also available in, I believe, a leather sole for a bit less money, but this has the very famous day night rubber sole on the bottom. You can also get this in a, with a cap toe, but this obviously does not. This is just the very natural, basic, bare bone sort of boot. So it's not gaudy, it's not tacky, it's very uncomplicated. Um, some people say that the toe looks a bit duck billy because there's no toe cap on that, and it's a slightly wide last, a little bit. But I'm just a really big fan of these really nice uncomplicated service boot type aesthetics that really just let the leather and the construction speak for itself. And this is actually the first natural boot I've ever had. And I'm a big fan of it. It's obviously less versatile than like your regular brown boots, but with the right pants, like I really, I really like these with green khakis. I think they look really, really good. Plus they uh, don't take scratches on quite as easily as the regular brown Chrome XL, which has a kind of a vulnerable top finish. So that's an upside of this kind of boot. Otherwise, it's partly lined with calf skin down by the vamp here, although it's not lined up here. It's got these nice rawhide laces, which I'm not always a fan of rawhide laces, but I really like just the two different colors here contrasting with the natural Chrome XL leather. I think it just looks really, really nice. And like all of the trench boots, this is Goodyear welted. It's a 360 degree Goodyear welt all around the bottom. So that's gonna increase the uh, water resistance and the resolability a little bit compared to something like a Blake stitch boot. And with the stitching, it is triple stitched along the vamp here. It's double stitched along the counter around the back, single stitched down by the laces. So it's the kind of stitching where you can tell it's durable, but it's not over the top. It's not screaming at you about how durable it is as uh, some, some types of boots do. I think like the Wolverine 1000 mile comes to mind. It's like so much stitching and that is a durable boot, mind you. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but again, this boot is just a bit more minimalist in the way it approaches its aesthetics, which I'm a really big fan of. Besides that, I didn't really have any issues with any quality control stuff either, which I was really, really happy about. There was no loose grain at all on this leather. Um, there was also no loose threads or anything like that. There's no wheeling on any of the stitches. Although after I've been wearing these for about a week, I did start to get quite a few loose threads uh, up, by the, up the upper and also down by the laces as well. So it's not totally perfect, but overall pretty happy with the quality control. So if you've watched my other videos, you're probably a bit tired of hearing me talk about Chrome XL. It's an enormously popular leather from Halloween Leather Company, uh, which is a Chicago-based tannery that was opened in 1905. But if you're unfamiliar with Chrome XL, it's a combination tan leather that is used on everything from Wolverine to Viberg. As far as the thickness goes, I'd put this somewhere between the like sort of regular normal thickness of a Wolverine and the extremely thick leather of Viberg. It's a, it's a good balance. It's pretty substantial, I think. and. Uh, it's definitely thicker than something like, even like a lot of Red Wings, but it's easy to break in, funnily enough. I did get a bit of rubbing on my pinky toe uh, on the outside of the boot as I was walking around in these at the beginning, but by and large, yeah, not much of a break in with these, which I liked. So when you get the boots, Oak Street attaches a little booklet with information about the leather, which lets you know that it undergoes 89 separate processes, taking 28 days and using all five floors of the Halloween facility in Chicago. And uh, during the production, they use like food grade beef tallow and cosmetic grade beeswax and marine oil and chrome salts and tree bark extracts and lots of other secret ingredients that uh, ultimately results in this slightly corrected full grain leather that's both durable and supple. And uh, I really want to emphasize again that Oak Street, at least judging from this shoe, is really good at selecting their leather. A lot of people complain that there are just too many Chrome XL boots out there with loose grain, uh, but this boot looks great. So of course this is natural Chrome XL, so it doesn't have quite as much of the famous depth of color that Chrome XL usually has. And it is harder to get it to hold a shine. Uh, the upside though, in my experience anyway, is that it doesn't scratch quite as easily as the brown kind, or at least the scratches aren't as noticeable. The downside is that uh, dirt is more noticeable. I didn't clean these because I wanted you to know what they look like when you've actually been wearing them for a while, like I have. So as you can see, you might need to clean them more often than the brown kind. 
So when it comes to taking care of Chrome XL, you're gonna hear a lot of recommendations out there just because so many boot companies use it and they all, uh, many of them anyway, like to make their own products and they would like you to use them so they can make it a little bit more money. But when you talk to people who know what they're talking about, including Huawei leather company themselves, they just say go with Venetian shoe cream and that'll be fine. And that's what Oak Street recommends as well. So it's pretty basic. First, you rub it all down with a damp cotton cloth. They actually recommend using distilled water for that. If you really wanna make sure that absolutely no impurities get into the leather, it's probably not such a big deal, but if you've got distilled water, you can do that. Um, then after that, you put, get some Venetian shoe cream, put it on a cotton cloth, rub that all over. Then after that, you get a horsehair brush. You just kinda of like buff it out a bit, uh, make sure it gets into the, uh, into the pores and everything else. One of the reasons people often recommend a horsehair brush is because the hairs are so fine, they can help to push the cream further into the pores. So that's a bonus. And then you just let it dry in a well-ventilated area and that's pretty much it. How often you need to uh, condition them kind of depends on how often you wear them. Probably every few months is a good bet. Uh, you know, like say two to four times a year. Again, depending on how much punishment you put them through. And that's pretty much it. You can also use Sophia's Renovator if you like. That's another very popular conditioner for leather that's often recommended for Chrome XL. The main reason you might want to do that instead of Venetian Shoe Cream is that Sophia's Renovator makes it a little bit shinier. So if you're a big fan of shiny leather, then that could be a good, a good option for you. I do need to point out though that when you're talking about this leather in particular, this is natural Chrome XL. So when this gets very shiny, it's gonna look a bit more like you're walking around with gold shoes on. That could be a pro, that could be a con. But nonetheless, it does have a reputation for not holding onto the shine quite as well as brown Chrome XL. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so this sole, the outsole is Daynight, which is a very beloved rubber sole from Britain. The studs look pretty funky and modern, but it's actually been the same kind of rubber since 1910. It's actually very kind of old. <laughs> and the, uh, the idea with Daynight is that it's meant to provide comfort and grip in all conditions without attracting dirt, which is definitely an issue with like a leather sole, which this shoe is also available in for a cheaper price. Now, uh, Day Night is not quite as soft as leather, but it does have good shock absorption. I go back and forth on how well I think it holds up in inclement weather. Like, I do think it's better than leather. Uh, I think Vibram might be a better rubber though, like when it's raining for grip and everything. But generally, Day Night is a really, really good compromise with firmness and grip. It's softer than like oak or cork. Uh, it's harder than leather and it's relatively grippy. So after the rubber, there's a stack leather in the heel. I thought it was wood, but the side says it's leather. And what's interesting is that the sole also has oiled leather waterlock soles, which means the leather has an oil to make it extra water resistant. And adding to that water resistance is the fact that this is a Goodyear welt, which means there is a layer between the upper and the sole. Usually it's leather or rubber, but I believe Oak Street uses a canvas rib. And that makes it a lot easier to resole and it makes it again, pretty water resistant. I do want to point out as well that the stitching here on the welt is really top notch. It's all even. I don't see any puckering or anything like that. And uh, this is also a 360 degree Goodyear welt, which is a tiny bit more water resistant than a 270 degree welt, which is what you see on Red Wings Iron Ranges or Wolverine's 1000 Miles. It's not a huge difference with the water resistance, but like some people prefer a 360 degree welt like this one for that reason, even though the downside or a potential downside is that it makes a slightly bulkier heel that some people don't find as aesthetically pleasing. So this can change at any time, but right now the sizes run from seven to 14 and they've only got one width available. So if you have super wide or super narrow feet, you might be out of luck, although you can always just experiment with different sizes. Sometimes that helps in those situations. For me, I'm a D width anyway, which is considered the normal width. So I didn't have any issues. And when I spoke to Oak Street, they recommended I get true to size and true to size worked out just fine. So I'm an 11.5 in these shoes while I'm an 11 in like Red Wing and Wolverine and Thursday and Viberg and a bunch of other boot companies that tend to run a little bit larger. But this is pretty much true to size. The last is called the Elton Last. It's got a bit of a reputation out there. Some of the pros are that I think it's pretty, uh, very aesthetically pleasing. I'm a fan of the way it looks. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow. Again, some people call it duck billy, but I'm, I, I like it. I like this very simple plain toe sort of design. A downside of the fit is that my toes often sort of like bump up against the top of the shoe. Now that, that's not to say that I have the wrong size at all. Everything else fits great. And when I'm walking, it's not an issue. It's more that like when I'm standing still, the shoe and the sole is designed in such a way that like the foot sort of slides forward a little bit more than it has to. And I've read this complaint on a lot of boot forms as well, like on a Reddit's Goodyear Welt subreddit, which is really good. You should check it out. But that is worth pointing out. I still was quite happy with the shoes, like all round. I'm a big fan of them. But yeah, that's, uh, it, it was not super comfortable when I'm just standing still. So that's 
worth pointing out. The arch support as well isn't fantastic and people always say that I complain about every boot not having good arch support, but uh, that's not really true. I mean, it is very, very uncommon to find a boot with really good arch support. Like I'm very aware of that, but it's not impossible. Like the olden indies have really good arch support. Uh, my RM Williams have really good arch support. Like it does happen that boots have good arch support. So I call it out when that happens. These ones, yeah, the arch support is, I mean, kind of normal by which I mean, it's not the best quality uh, arch support in the entire world. But again, they were pretty comfortable. They're not like the top, top tier of comfort, but generally speaking, I was pretty happy with it. Although yeah, the toes bumping against the end of it was a bit of a downside. So as far as the price goes, the Natural Trench Day Night Boot is $462. You can also get this with a leather sole for $426. These prices can always change, of course, but that's what it is right now. The Day Night Sole definitely does add a bit of money to the price of the boot. Now, $462, bucks, that's relatively pricey, I think, for the boot. It's a very well-constructed boot. I like it. Uh, I would have been really happy with $399 for a pair of boots. $462 is... It's, again, it's pretty pricey. Uh, I'm not super disappointed with it, but I wouldn't call this the best, best value for money out there. Now you can sometimes find them for cheaper on places that like mark down and clear out items like uh, like Lust and Found and outlet stores and things like that. Sometimes uh, they're not always on there though. Sometimes they're on Nordstrom as well and sometimes Nordstrom puts them on sale. So if you're very, very patient, you might be able to find a good deal with these. But at the moment, and again, price can change at any time, but yeah, you're looking at 462 bucks. Okay, so why should you get a pair of trench boots? I mean, I'm a really big fan of the aesthetic. I think they're really good looking shoes. I really like this very minimalist, traditional sort of masculine service boot style aesthetic it's got going on. It's very simple, it's not gaudy, it's not overcomplicated. It does let, it just kind of lets the leather and the construction speak for itself. But I do like the touches that they did do. It's like triple stitch along here, and it's also got this nice Goodyear welt as well, which definitely makes it a little bit more durable than some other competing boots. Uh, on that note, it's unusually water resistant for a boot like this. It's a 360 degree Goodyear welt, plus it's got these uh, waterlock leather soles on the inside. And on that note, the day night sole is, in my opinion, uh, it's just like a really nice combination of durability and flexibility and grip. It's not fantastic in any one of those categories, but day night, the point of day night is that it's like a really nice compromise between them all. It's a good amount of softness as well. It's not too soft, but the shock absorption is pretty nice. So it's just like a really good all rounder. And uh, yeah, day night sole, I don't know if it's worth an extra $40 for these, but uh, it, is a, it is a nice touch on a pair of boots like this. Another thing that I want to point out, uh, the weight, as I mentioned earlier, is really nice. The boot just feels really good walking around if that's something that you're after. And then finally, they've got really good leather selection as well. Like this is Chrome XL leather and everyone uses Chrome XL leather. It's not that unusual anymore. I mean, like Viberg uses it and Wolverine uses it. There's a really broad swath of boot companies that use it. But where they often differentiate themselves is their leather selection, the quality that they get. I think like Wolverine is not great at the, at the Chrome XL they do select. Whereas this one, again, had no loose grain and it's just nice and smooth. And I think the, the quality control for this brand is pretty good. So there were a few things I wasn't as crazy about with the trench boot. Number one, the price, 462 bucks. That is pretty pricey uh, for the quality here. Now it is very good quality, these boots, don't get me wrong. The construction is really good. The leather selection is really good. I think uh, I would have been very happy with the price closer to like $400-ish, 462 bucks. I don't think it's the best value boot out there. Uh, it's not the worst, but I, you know, I wasn't super, super happy with the price. Another thing is that uh, this is natural Chrome XL leather. Now you don't have to get it in natural Chrome XL, of course, but given that this is the most popular variety of this boot, I did just want to point out that uh, while it is, I think better than brown Chrome XL at hiding scratches and stuff like that, it is less versatile. It's harder to get an outfit that works with it. Um, and it also doesn't take a shine very well, uh, not quite as easily as brown Chrome XL. So that's worth pointing out. But I mean, you know that when you buy it, that's not like a big surprise when you get it. Another thing, uh, I did get a few loose threads on this after just a week of wearing them for boots at this price point. That normally doesn't happen with a well-constructed boot in my experience. Um, yeah, loose threads uh, by the counter as well, down by the laces. Uh, there was like about a good three or four of them. That's easy to take care of, of course. A lot of people like to just kind of burn them off. But yeah, I did want to point that out. Um, that was a, a little bit low quality control in that respect. And finally, there's the fit. Uh, the fit is fine. It's quite nice. I didn't hate it. But like I said earlier, this boot, and I'm not the only one to say this out there, this boot does have a tendency of uh, making the toes kind of push up against the front of the boot. That's not a sizing issue. Like it's not, that doesn't mean that I got the wrong size. It's rather the way that the sole is kind of constructed, um, that it's, a, it's just very common for that to happen when you're standing still. So that wasn't a deal breaker. Like I didn't absolutely hate it, but it, it is a pretty common complaint. All right, so this is my thoughts on the very pretty Oak Street 
trench boot. For the full written review, which is very long and very detailed with lots of pretty photos, just Google Stridewise and Oak Street. And uh, make sure you subscribe as well because I've got a ton more boot reviews coming up.